Ooh, welcome back to Keep On Creating. I'm Mike, this is my t-shirt printers. Let's create something. First off, welcome to all the new subscribers. It's great to have you here. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button down here and ding the bell so you know when a fresh episode sneaks into the channel. And smashing that like button would be awesome too. So today, today, I really felt like I needed a haircut because man, my hair is getting so long. Today what we're going to be doing is taking this text over here and turning it into something awesome. Something that we could end up printing on a t-shirt for merchandise or anything like that. Making it simple but cool and punchy. All in Illustrator, vector goodness. Let's do this. Let's start by getting a new page open. So I'm gonna head up here where it says Illustrator and go across to File, drop down to New and get this new document page open. Now I'm gonna go for an A4, which is this 297 by 210 millimeter. And I'm gonna make sure it's just horizontal. So this way around and click Create to get a page open. With our page already, let's get our text tool up. So I'm just gonna hit T, which is this tool over here. And that's our text tool, our type tool and just click on the page and let's start typing in. So I'm gonna need keep on. Okay, I'm just gonna hold down my command key, click off any part of this page over here, hit V to get my selection tool, and I'm just gonna click and drag that up there. Okay, and then I'm gonna type again. So I'm gonna hit T to get my text tool up again. Click on the page and let's type in creating. Just get rid of that four. It's my brilliant typing skills. Okay, now what I'm gonna do with these both selected, so with my selection tool, I'm just gonna drag over both of them and let's just select a font. So I'm gonna go for, let's see, it doesn't really matter whatever font you wanna use, I'm just gonna be just using this font here. Okay, let's select with this creating bit, okay? I'm gonna hit E to just get this transform tool up, which is this tool over here. You can see it gives me these little nodes all over the place, all these scale guides. So I'm gonna click and drag that. Now you can see it's a bit warpy at the moment. Just hold shift and it creates a nice, just even how it's meant, how the font's actually meant to look. So it scales it up in proportion. Okay, just hit V again to get your point tool, your selection tool. And I'm just gonna drag that into the middle of the page. Let's just make this a little bit bigger. So again, my transform tool of E, and I'm gonna click and drag while holding shift and alt just to get it a little bit bigger, okay. And this one we're gonna come back to in a bit. But before we go any further, what we have to do, we have to convert this text to outline. So we have to take it from a font and turn it into a graphic file because there's no good working like this. It'll just be a nightmare. So with them both selected, so to select them all again, you can just go Command A or you can just get your selection tool over here and click and drag over everything, which is your decision. You spin the roulette wheel on that one. Now we're gonna head up to Type and I'm gonna drop down to this Create Outlines and you can see there's the quick key over there. Shift, Command, O, click on that and and you can see it takes it from that font and now you can actually see it's given us all these nodes which has turned this font into a graphic. Now just having a look at this graphic just for design's sake, you can see how close this T is to this I. So if we had to zoom out of this, you can see it, that T also almost becomes that I over there. So I'm gonna zoom into it again. It's okay when it's big like this, but you always gotta look at things small and big. So I'm gonna just hit my direct selection tool, which is A, or this tool over here, okay? I'm gonna select my font and I'm gonna hold shift and just drag it away from that line there. Basically, I'm looking for almost this gap over here between this N and this G to be the same distance between here, 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 and here. So you can see this font isn't actually designed very well. Let's just drag that up there. So. It, it's nicely spaced, okay. So I'm just gonna zoom out again. Did we convert that one? Yep, we converted that one. Right, so let's start off by smashing up this creating bit. To smash up this creating bit, we are going to be using this Pathfinder tool quite a bit. So if you haven't got this window open, you can't find it, just hit it up to Window and drop down to where it says Pathfinder with this Shift Command F9. So if you can't find it, just find it over there. What we're gonna do, we are going to crack this number one. We're gonna get our pen tool up. So we're gonna hit P or you're gonna select this tool over here. I'm gonna split it. Let's make it from about here. I'm gonna go all the way across, all the way to here. Okay, it's gonna click down here. So just keep on clicking. And let's go, I'm gonna start from, let's go, yeah. Uh, no, let's click it about here and I'm gonna go back up this way and click over here and then I'm gonna just close my shape off by clicking this a little bit over here. So you can see it gives me that little O to make sure that I'm 
sealing off this or creating a closed path. So I'm going to click on that. Okay, now I'm going to hit V, okay, just to deselect everything and click on my artboard space. Now, I don't know where my swatches have gone, but let's get my swatches up. So I'm just going to go down here, swatches, and get them up. Basically, all I want to do is just change these colors around so we can see what we're doing. I'm just going to select our text. So I've got my selection tool, which is this tool up here, and I've selected this creating bit. Let's just make that blue for now so we can see the difference between our new shape and our graphic behind it. Now, with our new shape selected, so I'm just selecting that, I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to select this creating part at the back over there. Okay. Now, in a Pathfinder window, you can do this a couple of ways. We're just going to use this divide section over here. So I'm going to click on divide. Okay. And you can see to the eye really hasn't done that much but what it actually has done i'm just going to close this window over here what it actually has done you can see if i just go over here and i've got my smart guides on it basically selects that little bit over there so it's actually going through all these little bits here if you haven't got your smart guides on just go command u and it switches them on so command u and it switches them on so you see i've switched it off i go command u and it switched it back on so with my selection tool selected which is this tool up here I'm going to go through and delete all these little bits that I don't want. So the first four, what we're going to do is just ungroup this. So I'm going to go Command Shift G, okay, and that ungroups everything. So it, it splits everything. So even that little bit is not no longer grouped to this section over here. To ungroup, if you can't find the quickie or type it in, just you're just going to head up to Object and you're going to drop down to this ungroup over here. Okay, so let's just run through and just delete all these little excessive bits. So you can see, like, I don't want that little bit over there. Delete that, select this one, hit that backspace. Okay, I'm gonna move through, fast through all this, just gonna delete all that, delete that, and have we got everything? Okay, cool. Yeah, got everything there. Now, all these little bits here are still separate. I want these blacks to be joined. So when I click on this one, I want all this black area here to be selected, likewise for this blue area. So let's select this blue little bit at the bottom over here. So I've got my pointer tool, which is this tool over here, and my selection tool. I'm going to click and just drag just over those little bits there. Okay, head over to my pathfinder and I'm going to click unite. So it unites all of those. So when I click that one little blue bit, you can see it selects all that blue bit there. Likewise for this top section, just going to click and drag over it. So select all those little bits there. And I'm going to click unite and likewise for this black section over here. Now it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to select this bottom bit over here. Okay. And then I'm going to hold shift and just drag my marquee through that little area there. And I've selected everything, I think. So let's just make sure. Okay, cool. Yeah, so you see we've got that bit, that bit, and that bit. And you can see I've missed a little bit there. So I'm just going to put these back. Select there, hold shift, click that, and hit the unite button. Now they're all selected all together. Let's really start smashing it up now. So what we're going to do is I'm going to select this black bit over here. I'm just going to click and drag it oddly just about, let's just drag it somewhere over here. And I'm just going to click this little blue bit and just drag it that way. So you can see it's kind of given that shattered effect there. But what I'm going to do is take this a little bit further now. So I'm going to select my black bit and I'm going to get my rotate tool up. So I'm just going to hit R or you can just go over here and select this rotate tool there. Now you can see it's given this a little anchor right in the middle over here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that little anchor and I'm gonna put it just snap it up there to that part over there now what that does it basically rotates from that area there so that is my anchor point so let's just rotate this a little bit further out just about there so you can see it starts off nice and thin and it comes out what you're looking for I'm actually gonna move it a little bit up okay likewise for this little bottom bit over here I'm gonna drag that in this way a little bit get my rotate tool up, which is R, and just create it. Oops, I'm just gonna drag my anchor point there, get the anchor point, reposition it on this edge here, and I'm gonna drag it this way this time. Just put it, pull it in a little bit with my selection tool, okay. Probably went a little bit far with that one, just reposition that anchor again, and let's just drag it in a little bit. So it starts off thin and just gets a little bit thicker over there. Okay, cool. Let's add a little bit more, a few cracks in up here. So I'm just getting at my pen tool, hit P, and let's just draw some very sharp triangles. So let's draw a long one like that. Okay, drag it in there. Okay, I'm just gonna bring that down there. I'm gonna rotate that a little bit so you know what the rotators is just that R. It's gonna drag it over there a little bit. Cool. Let's just change the color of this one, get that swatches up again. I don't know why my swatches aren't in my side palette. Let's just put them up here so we can get a hold of them. Okay, so I'm gonna make this, let's make it yellow so we can actually see it. Okay, so with that in there, 
I'm going to hold, click this, hold Alt and just drag it, make another little sharp one over there, just take the top of that A off, cool. And let's just scale this this way. I want one coming in just on this side over here, just to crack that up a little bit. And I'm going to hold Alt again, click and drag this. I'm going to rotate this, so get your R up. And I'm going to flip it around all the way this way. And let's make one coming in here. Cool. Now the cool thing, obviously, because this is vector, you can just click on that little node there. I want that to be a little bit wider, so you can see I'm just making a little bit wider entry there. Just want that little bit peeking out over there, which is cool. And let's just make it so it goes there. Let's just make another copy of this yellow one. So I'm holding Alt while dragging it, and I just wanted to, I want to get pretty close to that one and just put it about there. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's leave it like that. So I'm gonna select both of these. So I'm gonna hit this one, hold shift, hit there, and I'm gonna just unite it. So I'm gonna click this little button over here, click on that, uh, just click expand. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold shift and select this black part of our graphic over here. So hold shift, select that. And now I'm gonna hit this button over here, holding alt and click this button over here. And you can see it punches it through there. It's gonna click expand again and make sure it punches out all those little bits. Just punch this bit out here, so double select again. So you're going to select this one, hold shift, hit that blue area, and hold alt, and then click this minus bit, and you can see it punches it through there. And likewise for this section up here, the same as this bit down here, we're going to unite these two areas first so they become one graphic. So I'm just going to select both of them, hit this unite button over here, okay, and then I'm going to hold shift and select our top blue area. Head over back to our Pathfinder, hold Alt again and click on that and then click on Expand. And you can see it's now created that little shattered effect going through. That looks pretty cool. Let's just work on this top section with our keep on bit. So I'm going to drag that in over here. Now we can make it bigger. So I'm going to hit E, get our Transform tool up, which is this tool over here. I'm going to hold Alt and Shift at the same time just to scale from the center. I'm not too sure where the center of this actually is. So to find out the center where it's going to be, it's going to get M, okay, and that brings up this rectangle tool over here. I'm just gonna quickly just draw a rectangle completely over the whole thing, and you can see it kind of gives me the middle of it there. So get my rulers up, I'm gonna go Command R, you can see my rulers are popped up, and I'm just gonna drag a guide in, okay, from there to there, and you can see it pops in that guide. Now I'm gonna select this rectangle that we've done, and just delete that, don't need that anymore, and then select our keep on bit, and just, just find out where the center of that is, okay, just push it off to the side, you can see now we're nice and centered up there, okay. And I think, yeah, size-wise, that's pretty cool. Let's get that rectangle tool back up again. So M or this tool over here, which I just pointed to, which is this rectangle tool. And I'm gonna draw a rectangle. Let's make it about here-ish. Okay, cool. Let's get that swatches up again, and let's just make it red for now. Okay, now, obviously we can't see our keep on bit over there, so there's a few ways we can actually see it again. You can just right click and head on down to arrange and send to send backward or send to back, or there's your cookie there. Shift, command, and that square brackets. Okay, so just do that, and you see now it's popped up. Let's basically send this piece of red graphic all the way to the back, and we just left with our red, uh, black text on top or black graphic on top. Okay, so let's just stylize this a little bit. I'm going to get my absolute or direct select tool, which is this tool over here. Okay, and I'm going to click on this little corner, drag it in a little bit while holding shift. Obviously, if I don't hold shift, it can go up here. I want to still keep a little structure to it, so I'm going to drag it into there. Likewise, for this side, just single click and drag it in to about there-ish. Okay, cool. And let's just break this up a bit too. So let's just get our pen tool, which is P, and I'm just going to click. Uh, let's just click from about up here, take that top piece off, just click over there, click, uh, should we do, click there, just bring it down to about like here-ish, okay, just click all the way around to seal off that graphic, let's make another little bit coming in over here, it's going to go right through there, just break it, close that graphic off, and let's make one from the bottom, so I'm going to Draw another little triangle coming from the bottom over here. Okay, it doesn't matter that you overlap that little bit. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we, let's get this all united up. So I'm gonna hold shift, click on this one, hold shift, click on that one, hold shift. So I've got all those three elements, just change the color so you can see. I've got all those three elements selected. 
head to my Pathfinder tool and I'm gonna click Unite, so they're all one object. And then I'll shift and select our red bit over here. So I'm gonna click on the red, so I've got those two objects selected. Hold Alt and just click on this minus and you can see it's basically punched everything out. So just quickly send this to the back. You know what the back command is because I showed you a little bit earlier and you can see we've got that little crack through. Let's just tighten this a little bit up here. I'm just gonna zoom right in and just select this little point over here and just drag it in. Just make sure that it's a straight line and not a curving line over there. Okay, cool. Just wanted to make that a little bit smaller. To me, it was a little bit big. Okay, cool. So there's our base structure at the moment. So we've got all our little design elements going on in here, all the bones of it, all weird colors going on. Now it's time to get those colors dialed in and make this logo look really cool. To start adding in color, I've got a library. So I'm gonna get on up here to window and drop down to libraries and I should get my library right cool. There's my keep on creating library. Just get the swatches up. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add this theme to my swatches. So I'm just gonna go add theme to swatches. Cool, I've got my little swatches down there. Okay, let's close this library up again. And the first thing I'm going to do is just head over here to my layers, just open that up and make a new layer. So I'm just gonna create new layer, take this layer and I'm gonna label it, just double click it there, label it background, cool, okay. And I'm gonna drag it below our artwork layer. And this one, layer one here is our artwork layer, okay. We just know which is which. Now, with my background selected, I'm just gonna get my rectangle tool up. So I'm gonna hit M and just draw a big, big block over here. So I'm just draw a big block like that. I don't want it red, I want it a black color. So I'm just gonna use my black over there. Let's just change this area over here to, let's make it our blue color in HFX. I'm gonna change that to our blue color. And I'm gonna change these two colors over here to our nice and bright reddish color. And let's change this keep on bit over here to a blue. Okay, so that's what that looks like there. Now to add a little bit more to this, well, let's add in, you know what? Let's add in one of those lightning bolts. So I'm gonna hit click, 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 and click. Okay, and let's just make this just that black color there. Okay, cool, that looks pretty sweet. The lightning bolt is just a little bit too solid, so to break it up, I'm just going to go and select it. So get my pointer tool up or my selection tool, just select that, and let's just flip this color around. So all I'm gonna do is go Shift X, which is just flipping my stroke and my fill around over here, and you can see it's just it's kind of disappeared because we can't actually see it at the moment. And let's just give this a stroke. Now I'm gonna stroke it to the inside. So I'm gonna hit this little button over here that says align strokes and you see it says align stroke to inside. I'm gonna click on that and let's just scale this up over here. Just quite, let's just make it nice and thin. Let's have a look how that looks. Cool, so it's not so overwhelming. So looking at this design from a screen printing point of view, you're gonna be looking at a three color plus a flash or an underbase. So technically it's gonna be a four color. So you're gonna to have to print that white underbase first, probably hit that twice and then go color, color, color. Yeah, that's right. I just had to remember how many colors there were in the print. Well, I'm not actually seeing it. You can see it, I can't see it. Without having an underbase, the print will look a little bit dull. Now that may be what you're looking for, maybe what you prefer, but if you put that white underbase on, it'll look like that. Give it some pop. If you do do this tutorial, head on over to the Keep On Creating Facebook group, which I'll leave a link in the description below, and show us what you've created. And that about brings us to the end of yet another episode. Make sure to follow us on our social channels all linked over here. Smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm out of here.